In this video, we'll show how to compare predicted erosion results between two cases. Uh, we'll be using the supplemental training example for CFB erosion, which is a CFB combustor system. And we've run uh, two different geometries of this. Uh, when you set up the simulation, uh, you'll have to have the enable wall erosion uh, checkbox turned on. And then you can set the erosion parameters uh, based on the material that uh, your walls are uh, lined with. In this case, this curve is appropriate for refractory lined walls. Um, so here, let's go ahead and look at the simulation results and we'll show how to compare these two cases. Uh, let's start with a view results, uh, which will show us particles colored by volume fraction and uh, the walls are transparent. So this is a decent starting point for what we want to do. Um, let's also get case number two into here. This is the baseline case right now. And so let's load in one more case here so we can create a new frame. We can do file, load Barracuda data, load 3D data set. We can navigate up one directory and that was in the baseline directory. So now let's go into the modified directory you can click on any file here. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it's one of these PLT files, and it will load in the most recent set of results from that simulation. So if we look at this, that simulation also ran out to its end time of 40 seconds, and so did case one. Just so we don't get these two cases mixed up as we're looking at them, let's put a label on each one of them as well. Um, when you add a text label, it's often convenient to uncheck this box for auto redraw because otherwise, as you're writing text, uh, TechPlot will try to refresh the view after every character and it really slows things down. So we don't need that while we're writing these words. So we'll say accept. You'll see that nothing really shows up here because we didn't have auto redraw. So if you want to see it, you can click the redraw button. Um, and then here, I'll click into this second frame, get back into labeling mode, click there, and we can say case two modified. Okay, let's accept that. And again, if you middle click or if you click the redraw button, you'll see that. Okay, so now we have labels on them. Uh, we won't get them mixed up because they do look pretty similar. Let's go ahead and tie all our frames. So if you click frame, tile frames, we can choose this mode, which is kind of um, vertically uh, arranged. And actually, I forgot. I should turn back on auto redraw. <laughs> now we do want it to do things automatically. Um, and now that they're tiled, we can kind of put our labels in nice places that are out of the way. OK. And then let's go ahead and link these frames. So go to frame, frame linking. And in this case, we want to link them by 3D plot view and contour levels. And we'll apply settings to all frames of this group. And by doing that, uh, anytime we rotate or zoom in on either of the cases, it will automatically adjust the other case to match that view. And then also, when we adjust any of our contour levels, it will automatically um, uh, transfer to the other view as well. OK, so to look at uh, predicted areas of erosion, let's go ahead and turn off the scatter layer in each of these views. And we're going to use something called isosurfaces to explore this. So let's turn on isosurfaces in both views. What you'll see is the default variable for isosurfaces is going to be the index i, which is the uh, index in the x direction. And that's not quite what we're going for. So we're going to change that from i to a variable called impact. Uh, in this case, it's this one, number 23. Uh, the numbering might be different on yours depending on which variables you chose for the output, but the name will be impact. Okay, so we'll do that. And if we click on this one, we'll see that the, the details view here changes back to I. So let's choose impact for frame number two as well. Okay. And then um, one more thing we should do is in the gear settings for the ISO surface, Let's change it from draw isosurfaces at specified value. Let's change that to draw isosurfaces at contour group levels. And you'll see that this will provide a much more useful view of um, what's happening in terms of the calculated impact. 
So we'll do that, and then we'll, we will adjust these levels over on the side as well. Uh, let's click here, do the same thing for the second frame. Okay, so that should draw a bunch of isosurfaces. And now we can start to explore uh, values of the isosurfaces that can show us useful information about impact. So I'm going to double click on this legend, and I'll kind of move it over here, because what we're interested in seeing in this case is to compare the um, predicted erosion on the outside of the cyclone. So I just want to see both of those cyclones as I do this. Uh, if you click on Levels and Color tab, we can do Set Levels. And uh, one thing you'll notice here is that actually the values for the variable impact are usually pretty large. They're usually on the order of 1e to the 10 or 1e to the 12 or something like that. Um, and so they don't represent absolute values of erosion. Um, sometimes people ask, you know, can I, can I predict how many millimeters per day are going to be eroded or can I do, do something like that to quantify it? And that's not really what the values are showing us in Barracuda. They're showing us um, the calculated value of when particles are hitting the wall surfaces um, based on the impact formula that's shown in the Barracuda GUI under the wall erosion model. So every time a particle hits a wall, it knows its own mass and its velocity, and it, it transfers this numerical value to the wall, and the wall adds it up over time. Um, so just be aware that these numbers, they're kind of funky, but um, they are useful from a qualitative standpoint to compare uh, different cases. Uh, so here, let's go ahead and reset the range to min-max, and we'll say, OK. And what you'll see is it gets rid of a lot of stuff, right? The, the range was very, very small before. It was like 0 to 60, I think. Um, so it was just showing uh, impact everywhere. But now that we've gone to the upper end of the range, now we're seeing impact at the highest values, basically. So we're at like 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 10. Um, and even at this range, uh, the contour levels are tied together, right? And, and this is what one thing that's very important when you're comparing these results. You want to make sure that the values in the contour level are exactly the same from case one to case two so that you're making a fair comparison. Um, and since we did the frame linking and we told the contour levels that they have to stay the same, it's a really convenient way to, to make sure that that's happening. And so if we look at this, case two modified has a much smaller area being predicted for uh, erosion between these two contour levels. And case one has a much larger area being predicted between these two contour levels. And so this is the type of comparison that we're usually doing. Um, the other thing that's sometimes useful to do is explore the contour levels a little bit more. And uh, let's set the levels to something a little different. Let's say uh, that our minimum level, instead of 7 e to the 8, Let's go down a little bit lower, and let's see if we can get a, a little bit more information about other areas where the erosion may not be as severe. Um, so let's try something like 1 e to the 8 and click OK. OK, so what this will do is it will expand our uh, ISO volume range out a little further. And so we're seeing more areas that are indicated with erosion, um, but these would be areas that might be less severe erosion than what we were seeing at those higher values. Um, and even in this case, we can still see that case one looks like it would have more areas that would experience erosion compared to case two. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can set the levels. Uh, let's go back to something like 5e e to the 8 to, uh, let's change the upper level to 5e e to the 9. And what we should start to see is a little bit more coloring here in the uh, isovolume or ISO surface um, values. And so now we can start to compare the colors where this is a higher impact level than here, even though both of those wall surfaces have the ISO surface drawn on them. And so we could even possibly go a little further down, maybe 1e e minus 9. OK, and now we're getting a little bit more of that bright yellow. And so we're getting to see where these regions are really experiencing the highest values. Um, so that's kind of the idea of comparing cases that have uh, the wall erosion enabled. Um, this is how we, we would typically do it. It's a little bit exploratory, um, but we have found that uh, if you can find uh, 
ranges that are that are useful for visualizing it. It has uh, performed well when we compare it with um, inspection reports that people have done on their actual reactors. Um, in many, many cases, the predicted areas of erosion match very well with what they have found in the field for where erosion really is most likely to occur. Uh, so that concludes this video.